cry and shake. Tears fall out of the eyes. He or she moans and sobs, and then the following day, they go back to their normal life. They feel trembling in their heart one moment, and then the other moment, they forget it. But it should be the fear that stays with the individual and would help that person not return to needless sport and play. It is almost like a person, as the Imam Rahimahullah said, it's like a person who was stranded in the desert. And on his journey, he was attacked by wild beasts. And so he ran until he found a fortress. And he stood outside of the fortress and he said, A'udhu Billah, I seek refuge in Allah with this fortress to protect me from the wild beasts. But he sat there out in front of the fortress, only saying, A'udhu Billah, Bihad al Husn al Hasin. Damn. I greet you in the words, Fa Salaam Alaikum, which means peace and blessings be upon you. And I mention both Jesus and Muhammad's name. Peace be upon them both. They were both messengers of truth and reality. And you're looking at the Underground Railroad TV show. We come on every Saturday night at 10.30 on Channel 19. But if you miss, miss us, you can go to YouTube. <laughs> Just put in Underground Railroad TV and you can see me and Alderman and <laughs> whole lot of whole lot of things. But uh, I want to thank you. We're going to be talking about things that are going on inside of the United Snake. I mean, the United States of America <laughs> and outside of the United States of America. Almost had a slip of the tongue. <laughs> okay. So out of all Alderman, I'm Alderman, Alderman Jones. Yeah, sure. I'm my maker. Mm -hmm. And Brother Jeff. Yeah, shalom alaikum. Alaikum <laughs> salam. And uh, I want you to introduce yourselves and then we'll get this started. This is like a round table discussion. Just introduce yourselves. Yeah, elder. Uh, I'm the, uh, I'm Virgil Jones EO. And I'm a part of the Morris Science Temple of America, post number one. The, uh, our grand Sheik is Marcel Walter Neal. I'm the Deputy Consul General of the Moore Science Temple Post Number One. I'm also the Grand Governor. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Elder <laughs> Joe. Uh, my name is Jeff Wilson. I am the brother of the late great Ben Wilson. I'm the co-founder of Alive 25, the Benji Wilson Youth Foundation, and also the Director of Community Relations for the foundation. Okay, and his mother is the author of this book, book yeah. right here, Mom, the name of it is? Uh, to Benji with Love. Okay. <laughs> and um, you know what, just recently, there was something in the news uh, dealing with Mr. Snow, oh, if I'm wow. pronouncing this. Snowden. 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 <laughs> Snowden, yeah. Where he exposed the telephone company, I mean, telephone company for saying that they was tapping in on people's telephones to find out what is going on. And you know what, for years, Alderman Jones has been telling me, hey man, I think somebody listening to us. And I've been saying it myself, and Boise and Dr. Lee Warren, mm -hmm. Mark Sims, and all these people. And some, sometimes you think it's a joke. But first of all, do you think that he was right for blowing the whistle? Should he had done it? Because... That's exposing the United States of America to a lot right. of domestic and international enemies that may want to destroy it. Do you think that he was right, both of y'all? Yeah, I'm gonna just say something real short. He's the new 2013 Benedict Arnold in America's eyes for exposing the security uh, aspects of safety in this country towards other nations. Mm -hmm. So everybody's upset. I mean, that's all I pretty much, you know, researched about. I read a little bit about it. I seen other news. I was like, wow, this is uh, just a rude awakening. I mean, uh, for someone to expose your country, you're supposed to be a loyal citizen. And, you know, you say the, the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, and all. And, <laughs> you know, you're going to do something like this, you know. So, I mean, he's, he's banned for life. I know every American to a point is upset. But you have another side of America within the minority community was like, well, yeah, it's a thing of um, injustice to a point of America being um, 
you know, brought down for the injustice they did to us as people and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you really have two sides, but for the whole side, you're part of this country too. So it's gonna affect you too, no matter how this country has treated you. That's exposing the security aspect of our safety. So, I mean, uh, I just hope that um, justice is served in a way. I mean, as far as what he's done, I mean, that isn't right whatsoever, but hey, look at Watergate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well. I'm going to have to educate you a little bit. Yes. I don't think that he was wrong. He should not have been wiretapping United States citizens, all right? Yes, sir. I Unless they were dealing with terrorists. It didn't apply to a person who was just dealing with terrorists. They listen to your phone. They listen to my phone. <laughs> right. That's a violation of the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. I agree. That's the illegal search and seizure. But maybe, wait a minute, with the Patriots Act, doesn't that make a difference? Right. This Patriot Act don't mean nothing <laughs> because the Constitution says that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, not the Patriot Act. Oh, right. Okay. See, people have forgotten the Constitution, all right? Mm -hmm. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, not the Patriot Act. Hmm. Think about it. Okay, I understand what you you're saying. You got to go by the Constitution. There you go. All right? right. That's they right. made the Patriot Act because they didn't want to obey the Constitution, which guaranteed certain things couldn't happen to you as a United States, all right, naturalized, a natural citizen. Mm -hmm. All right? Notice what I said. Right. They wanted to be able to put you in jail <laughs> and hold you in jail till they got tired, and you ain't had no trial. <laughs> All right, that was what the Patriot Act was for. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just put the fear. And, you, and, yeah. you, and they don't have no proof that you ever did nothing. That's right. Yeah. But they holding you in jail. Right. All right. The key words you say on the phone like bomb this that, then you are a suspect. All of a sudden. Yeah, I heard about that. You follow what I'm saying? So yes, sir. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. think the man did nothing wrong. He let the people of America know that those people in the NSA, all right, because I happen to have known someone who was in the NSA. Okay. Mm. All right? And they don't know what they'll know now. I've been in their building with him. Did you listen? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And they Some people don't know what NSA means. What the National Security Administration. Okay. <laughs> and when I walked up in there, I ain't seen nothing like that before in my whole life. Wow. They got video screens. <laughs> I mean, from maybe from here to 35th Street. Those are street cameras, right? Those are the screens like you watch on a computer. Right, right, mm. right. All right. They got a room where they listen to conversations all around the country. All right? <laughs> That's why I can wow. say what I said. Scary. But, but they let me go because he was an important person. And they figured if he was bringing me, <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> all right? They made a mistake. But I never forgot that. Wow. Well, wait a minute, Alderman. Wow. Wait a minute now. <coughs> I never told him. I okay. need a drink. My brother, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm playing the wow. pundit now. And you but wait a minute, like, I got to ask wow. something now. If you get a job. <laughs> Don't drink. You, you, you sign a discl disclosure saying that you know what, hey man, I work for this company. I will not disclose certain things that are sensitive to the organization that I work at. So you saying this justified and he probably signed something like that? Both of y'all. Well, if you sign all, something like sides. if you sign something like that, would you go out there and reveal something first about all, the company? His company, he worked for a company who signed a contract with the government. Wow. He didn't sign no contract, but he already had the clearance before he worked for that company. You follow what I'm saying? Preach. Did you know what I said? He mm -hmm. already had the clearance. He just got a job working with that company because of his clearance. Now you tell me that it's illegal when I know that somebody is violating the Constitution and for me to tell the American people that they're doing this wrong stuff in violation of the Constitution. But if you yes, sign sir. a disclosure. I don't care what so you sign. Ask you, should, you, should you violate that? I don't that? care what you sign. They're violating the Constitution and that's wrong. You mean as far as what Snowden did? Yes. 
if he finds if he signed the disclosure saying that he would not okay reveal so it. from my understanding now you're saying that this mr snowden signed a letter of i'm disclosure. saying hypothetically you know he already if he had one right if, if he did but he worked to work for a company had signed the contract to work for the nsa right if you sign a disclosure then you're not supposed to discuss it with anyone mm. listen but we I understand we understand the like trickonomics of things i understand the trickonomics of things i'm going to let you teach like the, I the said, nation about that. If so. you know that a person is violating the Constitution. Right, I understand perfectly. Yeah. There's something called. Integrity. The, the, <laughs> no, there's something worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, misprison of a felony. You ever heard of that? Uh, no, sir. Let me tell you what that is. Misprison of a felony is when you have knowledge that somebody is committing a felony and you do not report it or disclose it. The punish a federal crime, the punishment is, all right, a year in the federal penitentiary. All right? Now you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Now, yes. what are you all going by? I know this is a felony they committing, all right? Because they're illegally listening in people's conversations. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. And oh, you're yeah, telling me that I ain't supposed to say nothing, which you want me to commit misprison of a felony. Stand. You know, I believe in the most high, yeah, so. You see what I'm saying? Everybody's going to get they just do. You know, I have to do the right, you know, positive love action that I feel the Father has made us to be as far as being on this earth as being his people. And that's what I'm promoting. So, I mean, evil is going to touch us, but we got to just keep going. So, see, they're yeah, going to they're, they're the, get their just do. One of the things I, we, I, I believe in, Jeff, and God in heaven knows I believe in. I spent three and a half years in prison, and I spent all my time in the library. Yes. Because I noticed, I told you, read. Sound like Malcolm. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> so that I would know the law. Yes. That's how I found out all that stuff about taxes and all that stuff. All right? By reading. And I do not believe that the man violated a law because he would have been committing a crime like the rest of them down there who had knowledge of that and didn't tell. Well, they're trying to yeah. extradite him right now. They ain't going to give him, the Chinese ain't going to give him. I think, what is he in? He's in Hong Kong. He's in Hong, okay. he's in Hong, he's in Hong Kong right now. Last we you checked, know? yeah. And they want to extradite him. He's not going to, they're not going to give him back to this country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, good morning, <laughs> America. Yeah, I've you know, seen it. Because, like I told you, he would have been committing the crime of misprison of a felony had someone found out that he and the other people knew this stuff, those others who knew, they should be prosecuted. So you're saying everybody in the NSA should be prosecuted. That's those who had knowledge. Got you. Because they, they knew that there was a felony being committed. And about the other things, too. You know, <laughs> Go ahead, you know, there was, you know what, there was just a hearing in Washington about there would be drones, unmanned They've been planes, using drone flying planes. over the United States. They've been using that. Well, okay. <laughs> well, they're making it known, okay. And they had a hearing about it. What did you think, you, about drones flying over the United States of America and possibly intruding on individuals' civil liberty and those drones can be loaded to do habit to somebody if they want. What's your opinion about that? He's violating the law, right? No, they have having hearings on. Well, you know, all, all I, you know what, I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't looked into that uh, issue at all. Uh, my energy has been concentrated on a lot of other things within uh, the violence aspects of things and other uh, aspects of just development of our people. And so, I mean, I, I can talk all day, but I haven't, I haven't really looked into that. I know about Snowden, so I really can't elaborate on that. Oh, okay. there was a brother named uh, Phil Snyder. Mm -hmm. Phil Snyder was a geological engineer. Yes. He helped to build over 100 underground cities across this country. You heard what I just You're not said? talking about Coop, are you? Well, no, I'm thinking about no. Coop. Okay. I know you're talking about. I'm talking about, no, he was a geological engineer. Okay. And they, they found him they in They murdered his, him. They murdered him. They cut his I throat about, with, the, yeah. with piano wire in his house. <laughs> All right, but they say he committed suicide. <laughs> yeah. All right. Of, yeah, I remember this. And he told about, they have a black budget. And he was going across the country speaking. 
and the budget is unlimited, and they don't have to tell nobody what they're using the money for. They have created what they call black helicopters, all right? Black ops, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. And they can see in your house through your walls. Did you really said right here in America. Tell you how many people in there? <laughs> All of that stuff. Yeah. Where you at? What room you in? See, I don't care anymore. See, so I tell you all this stuff because you need to know. I mean, is it just? But you know what? But is it justifiable? I'm talking. No, about it's not justifiable. I mean, you don't think that it's making the United no. States of America safer? No. I don't think it's making it safer. But I'm just. You've been in the military. <laughs> you know the truth. Yes. You've been in the army. <laughs> you was in the army, really? I, was in, I ain't never I was been in, in the army. <laughs> they wouldn't accept me in the army yeah, was, because they said <laughs> that I was a threat to the national security <laughs> when I volunteered. Yeah, they feel they don't understand. That's the old, you know, statement for. Oh, well, you know what they're trying? Come on, man, they're trying to protect us from the terrorists. But you, yeah, you trying to say the two what, enemies are from within? How many terrorist cases have they had in America since 9/11? This is all out of oh. right. And they knew that was going to happen before it happened. Now I'm going to have, have, since you're talking about this. In Boston and everything. There were two right, banks so. in, that, uh, in those two buildings. Mm -hmm. The City Corps and another bank. You know what they were getting ready to do? No, sir. The Arabs had all their money in there from the oil. <laughs> they were getting ready to take all their money out of, out of there and go over to Europe and, and put it invested. I'm talking about about three or four trillion dollars into Guess what? Euros. <laughs> wow, that's can, the. Can you imagine what would have happened to this country if they had to did that? What would have happened? They went bankrupt again. Okay. But wow. But let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna restructure. I'm gonna restructure my question. What would? What's the danger of drones flying over the United States of America? What is the danger? You know, I like I said, I haven't looked into okay. the what's issues the, of that. What's the I haven't danger? studied. I've studied. Did, you, what, what, is the, can, what is the enemy danger? They can set up a totalitarian system, all right, with that kind of mess, all right? I, think, I thought they already done it. <laughs> I thought they've already done it, but go ahead. No, they haven't finished it. It's called, see, in 1945, and you can write, read, read it, this in a book by a guy named Mars, M-A-R-S. Mars. In 1945, in another book called Blowback, all Blow right, back. by Simpson. Get okay. that, y'all. Blow back. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, let me tell you. What they did was, Hitler said, look, if we lose the war, mm -hmm. y'all go to the United States. Take all your money, put it in their banks. And what you do is, we got some people already there. <laughs> all right, because you know George Bush's daddy, Prescott Bush, sold steel to Hitler. Yeah. That's a yeah. fact. Yeah. All right. And what that. you will do after you get there is get in the FBI, the CIA, the State Department. Don't run for no office. Mm. So we can set up the Fourth Reich. See, the word R-E-I-C-H means empire. So we can set up, they, you know, Hitler had the Third Empire, all right, known right. as the Third Reich. The Third right. Reich, right. okay. Because if you don't know that's a German word, you, would, you think it's something... Way out there in space. <laughs> You're like Adidas, huh? <laughs> and that's what they have done. They have set up the Fourth Reich. Yeah. And if you cause them a problem, or then what, what do they do? They got their people in all them different spa spots. Yes. Then they come and get you and put you in jail. Do they lie? Wow. <laughs> They've arranged this back in the 1940s. Scary. Hmm? Wow, it's just... They just ain't finished the process. They've also built... Yes. They built uh, centers across this country, what you would call a concentration camp. You're talking about a FEMA camp. Yeah, that's FEMA. That's, yeah. The firm. Uh, that's, a nice, that's a nice word they use for it. <laughs> right. All right? And, right. And I'll tell you, all of our people of our hue, have you ever noticed we all live in train tracks? Yeah, I've, no, I've noticed it. I know why, though, but yes. Interesting. Then you go on your computer and look up King Alfred. That was a plan that was devised in 1948 for you, me, him, all of us, where they would put you in those if there was going to be some kind of problem with you all. But you know, Alderman, if, if, if we know about all these things that are transpiring, they're really old. 
it's really old. So <coughs> what what new things that they devise? I'm not do a you think? I'm not a communist, all right. Yes. But I read a book by Lenin, mm -hmm. all right, who was a communist. Yes. And you know what he said? There yes. will never be a revolution in the United States because the lumpen proletariat, that's the poorest of the poor, is daily being bought out. <laughs> Yeah, rest in peace, Gil Scott Heron. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now you know where you got that from. Now you know where you got that yeah, from. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm involved. Yeah, All right? Yeah, definitely. That was written by Lennon. I forget the name of the book at the moment. I read that and I sat there and thought for a while. He said, because the poorest of the poor are daily being bought out. So they say, I'll tell you what, Jeff. We don't want you messing with that Jones guy, you know. How'd you like to uh, make 100000 a year? <laughs> Mark Sim, you ain't think about Mark Sim. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I can tell you what you're gonna say already. You're gonna say a hundred thousand. Oh, well, buddy. You just want me to not be involved with him? Yeah. Yeah. You got a deal. I ain't gonna mess with him. You know, I I, I was taught that um, this world that we live in, despite what has happened to us, we have the greatest Holocaust in history. Over two hundred million of our people have been murdered due to the evil of this world and the world needs us because we carry the struggle of truth love peace understanding of the whole earth and universe so uh i want to just leave it like that you know uh i wouldn't hurt anyone for the sake of money you know that's just, I, that's well, i'm saying the average yeah, person ain't like right, that i know the average person yeah i mean i was raised with some ancient ancient uh, upbringing but the average from my mom person is and, not like you. Right. And they would yeah, sell and their it's unfortunate. Yeah, they I, would sell oh, their yeah, souls yeah. for two dimes. Yeah, they you know, look at the music industry. Yeah, people so, that Beyonce, yeah. Jay Z, they say that they well, the being Illuminati. That's what they, they say what they now? say. About who? Jay Z, Beyonce. They say they may be an Illuminati. I say maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave it like this. Jay-Z is the best MC rapper in the world. Um, I hear things. I love the art form that he's brought to the world to spread the culture of our struggle. Okay. Uh, Scoop Jackson wrote a book about hip-hop being the last black mecca, our voice. So that's what I represent. So if he's representing it in the righteous way of things, then fine. But... I mean, there's Common, you know, Kanye is doing, you know, the, the new Slave song he has right now is real hot. So, I, I mean, it's a, a outlet towards our struggle and what we're going through as far as the our form of the music and the style and everything. So, I'm going to leave it like that. Well, I'm going to ask you something, though, man. You know, with the book 1984 by George Orwell, has it come to a reality? Almost. Or George Orwell was a woman. Why George, what's it? Her name was George? Women couldn't write books back then. Okay. <laughs> wow, okay. Is it come, why do you say it's all So she may put a man's name on the book <laughs> so it could get published. Why do you say wow. it's almost come to reality? Almost. Wow. Well, they talked about view tubes in the book. That's TV. <laughs> that was in, back in 1910. Wow. Hmm. So, wow. You Knowledge know, you, is power. People yeah. pay attention. So, wow. That's what they get, and they could see anything and everything in your house, whatever that was going on. Wow. Isn't that what we're talking about now? Yes. They could listen to anything that, was, that you were talking on, they didn't call it telephones, they had a different word for it, but it meant telephones. Hey hmm. man, I asked, you had me looking around, you don't think there's bugs in here, do you think there's bugs in here somewhere? Well, Let me look under the chair. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to let anybody make me paranoid. <laughs> right. well, I'm going to say whatever I want to say. Did you let say it? Yes, sir. Because yeah. if they want to find out if it, ain't, if it ain't a bug, they got some uh, some black bugs. <laughs> they got some black bugs. Oh, okay. You know. All right, that'll tell. Yeah. You know, as uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there's three things that destroy us. Envy, jealousy, <laughs> and stool pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they don't need no wires for us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was on you Perhaps know, I was, the bucket, right? <laughs> Perhaps the bucket, yeah. You know, I was on YouTube, and you know what? I, I saw that they had a drone the size of an insect. I just couldn't believe it. Man. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you, 
Let me tell you, when I went through the stuff I went through, <laughs> that clown John Christopher who lied on me, he told me one day, he said, you know, it's Christmas time. I want to know if you would accept a gift from me. I said, I don't accept gifts. Well, I had a shirt I wanted to give you. I said to myself, <laughs> they got distant devices with button, the size of a button. Two minutes. Wow. Okay. Did wow. you know what I said? You want to yeah. give me a shirt for what? Okay. I don't know you like that. Hey, excuse me, man. <laughs> you wow. know what, audience, we've been kicking it around, just kicking it around, but you know what, I'm going to give both of them some finishing, you know, closing statements. So, can you have closing statement for the people? I'll let you go first. <laughs> <there, man. laughs> right. No, Tell us. Just, just, just definitely, for everyone out there, knowledge is power. Keep our youth in a function of reading. I, I feel that is one of the most important things. You know, get away from the PS3s, the uh, Xboxes and everything. Reading is so, so powerful. One thing that I, that really made me a more a lover of reading back when I was 17 years, years of age was George Foreman. Before he trained his boxing, this guy was pulling uh, cars with his waist. He said he will read for three hours before he start training. One so minute. reading is power. So definitely grasp that and we can make a difference. Okay, we got one minute. Well, I, I only say this. <laughs> They used to kill slaves for reading. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So read. Okay. There's something they don't want you to know. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I want to say assalamu alaikum to everyone, and um, thank you for looking at the Underground Railroad TV show. We come on every Saturday night at 1030, and we are on YouTube. Go to YouTube and just subscribe. Please. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna take you shalom. <laughs> shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. But he sat there out in front of the fortress, only saying, A'udhu billah, bihad al husn al hasin, and he never went inside. And so the beast ate him up because he only made his isti'adha, but he did not act upon it. And he did not actually seek the protection that the fortress actually gave. And so as it tells us, as Allah tells us in Surah Al-Dhariyat, verse 50, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And run, escape to Allah, for surely I am a clear warner. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, was told to tell his followers that you should escape to Allah so you don't escape into nothingness, into depression, or oppression, or hayat dunya but escape to Allah. Firru illallah. And so we found ourselves with the soul leaving the body. This is a very sacred moment. And there are many hadiths, many traditions, many scholars have looked into this. Alhamdulillah, in these times, Two great scholars of hadith and Islamic studies, Sheikh Nasruddin al Albani, in a book called Kitab al Janais, the book of Janazas, and Sheikh Umar al Ashqa in his book Al Yom al Akhir. They did a tremendous job in sifting through the traditions to find those that are authentic traditions so that we would not be put into a state of fear with something that was not true. We would not be told a story that was a fairy tale, but we would be told a story that would come from authentic sources, coming from 